Assalamu alaikum. Uh, appreciate the uh, opportunity. So I'll present a case, uh, and I was asked to present a case to set the stage for the uh, for the main talk. So I'll try and make it uh, brief uh, for the uh, for the main talk. This is a patient who his uh, story started back in 1997, when he was uh, 39 years old. He has type 2 diabetes, and actually at that time he was in the state. He has a history of palpitation, and he described it as a single extra beat with no loss of consciousness. His sister di died with, at the age of 36 uh, at home. She had a psychiatric problem. No further uh, information could be obtained. And also he has a brother who died at the age of uh, 58 also at home, uh, found it uh, in the bed. He's not known to have any uh, cardiac problem. And this is his uh, ECG that I found in the, uh, in the system. Uh, and if you can look at this uh, ECG, it's a normal sinus rhythm. Uh, the, for me as an electrophysiologist uh, with a patient who had a family history of sudden death, we look at the QT interval. His QT looks normal. Uh, he does not have um, any uh, clue of uh, Brugada syndrome. And uh, his also uh, QT is not even short. He has BVCs, and his uh, BVCs of uh, more of a, look like an outflow track uh, BVC. So whether these are uh, benign outflow track uh, BVC or uh, BVCs secondary to uh, major or malignant arrhythmias. When he was in the state uh, at that time, he underwent echo, no identified structural abnormalities. He actually uh, underwent cardiac cath, normal coronaries. Uh, EPS, according to the report, was uh, with no inducible uh, arrhythmias. Uh, not really sure what they are looking at that time. But eventually, he underwent an ICD implantation. And since then, he's been followed in, in our hospital. He remained asymptomatic with no recorded sustained uh, dysrhythmias. He underwent a battery change back in uh, 2009. And in 2011, he had back pain and could not undergo uh, MRI. So he requested himself the ICD to be uh, removed and was referred to me at, uh, at that time. So the differential of patients who uh, had a family history of, of sudden death and had some uh, BVCs, uh, they look benign BVCs in the ACG. The most common uh, cause of, of sudden death is underlying uh, coronary artery disease. Uh, the others are the cardiomyopathy, like uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Even with normal echo, they can have a normal phenotype, but genotypically they, they can uh, um, uh, have uh, hypertroph, uh, RV uh, dysplasia or arrhythmogenic RV cardiomyopathy, LV non-compaction is in differential. Uh, some of the brogadas, uh, especially if there is any hint in the, in the ECG, uh, long QT syndrome, they may show up with a normal ECG but have underlying long QT. WBW, especially if he has a left lateral uh, accessory pathway and not uh, clearly obvious, Early repolarization syndrome is emerging as uh, an etiology for uh, sudden death. Catecholamine polymorphic DT also is an etiology. Idiopathic VF, coronary spasm also can, uh, can lead uh, to that. Plus the non-cardiac like massive PE, intracranial hemorrhage, uh, epilepsy. So I put him in the treadmill and his QTC uh, has a normal response to, uh, to exercise, no inducible uh, arrhythmia. Uh, you look for the catecholamine induced uh, uh, arrhythmias. Uh, he underwent an ICD explant with laser lead extraction. Uh, post uh, explant, he underwent cardiac MRI with no abnormality suggestive of arrhythmogenic RV dysplasia or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, no even the presence of, of a scar. But yet, in, in the story, he, he, back in 2013, he was admitted with non-STEMI. 
and his cath revealed a significant uh, left main disease, two vessel coronary artery disease. His EF at that time was reserved. And he underwent uh, cabbage. Uh, he was put in the whole cocktail of ACE inhibitor, beta blocker, and statin. I'm not really sure whether some of the beta blockers, when you slow down the heart rate, their BVC burden can, can increase. A few months later, he has increasing um, uh, symptoms of, of palpitation, and his falter, his burden is around 30%, and his EF at that time even dropped to uh, 45%. And this is his ECG, and, uh, and it showed the uh, uh, lift bundle pattern, uh, BVCs, uh, anterior axis, more suggestive of outflow track. The transition is early, it uh, could be an LV uh, originated or in the uh, uh, RV. It's more toward the LV. Anyway, he was referred and underwent an ablation of the uh, BVC firing spot that was in the right anteroceptal area. And actually his EF improved, his symptoms improved, and also his um, halter with uh, less uh, BVCs. This is one of the, if you allow me just for one slide, this is one of the um, common things we see in the uh, Arrhythmia clinic, when you have a relative with sudden death and you start having uh, palpitation or uh, BVCs on the ECG, uh, first thing we look for is to identify the etiology of the sudden death in the, in the relative. Um, we don't have an autopsy in this uh, region. You need to exclude the uh, known uh, phenotype, genotypes uh, that can lead uh, to sudden death, especially the um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, also, the screening ECG, uh, ECG of the family looking for long QT, sometimes you need to put the patient in the treadmill or epinephrine test, uh, progada, RV dysplasia, and echo, we look for the hypertroph, the um, ARVC, LV non-compaction also, and uh, MRI and uh, EP study in certain cases of, uh, of uh, progada uh, patients. Uh, that's the end of my talk, and thank you for the attendance.